You're listening to The LaunchCast, the podcast about leadership, business, life, and growth with me, your host, George Andriopoulos. It's like food for your ears. At this time, I'm going to ask that you fasten your seatbelts. Launch sequence. Launch sequence activated. Launch sequence activated. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the LaunchCast, episode 204, Goosebumps, damn it. We're here with an episode I like to call the Brogue Warrior. You're going to find out why we call it the Brogue Warrior. But first, you know how we do this, guys. We got to go through all the pomp and circumstance, and that means... It's the Launch Dad himself bringing you your favorite goddamn podcast on the planet. It's true. It's damn true. Right now, as the beat drops. Into the black hole. What is happening, everybody? It is me, George Andriopoulos, back with another episode of the LaunchCast. Episode 204, The Brogue Warrior. We have an unbelievable guest today. I'm so excited to bring this dude on. And he's coming at us from across the pond. But first, uh, let's let's chat for a minute. What's going on with you guys? What's going on with you guys? I want you guys to start sending me messages. Drop me DMs. You can hit me at the LaunchCast show on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, I think it's called at LaunchCast show on Twitter, I believe. Or, or just hit me at Launchpad CEO. That's where you can catch me on everything. Hit me up with things you want to talk about in this monologue part, right? This is our, this is my soapbox time. I want to have as few of the soapbox episodes, full episodes as possible. Cause we love doing, you know, these interviews and speaking to these leaders that tell us their unconventional stories, but I still like to talk to you guys one-on-one once in a while. So hit me up with those ideas, any thoughts, questions. We're going to start airing those, uh, on air on every episode. But we got to do these interviews because that's what we are here for. So right now, I'm going to bring this man on screen. Let me see that. He's that beautiful face of yours. There he is. Look at that. Look at that. Gary Dougherty. Thank you, buddy, for being here. My, my pleasure. I, this is like being on Joe Rogan. Right. This is like being on Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's... I wasn't expecting the. I wasn't <laughs> expecting the hype and the and the and the intro and all the rest of it. Look at that. Uh, very- very good, man. Very good. Very good. I love it. Professional. Professional. That's how we roll here, Gary. You know that. <laughs> yes. 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 I like it. I like it. I'm, gonna, I'm about man. to. I'm about to shave my head and announce a UFC fight too. If you If you want to uh, see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Guys, yeah, let me do. Yeah. Let me do the intro quick. Gary Dougherty was born in Derry and brought up in a neighboring town. How do you pronounce that? Limavadi. Limavadi. Uh, he went to school and went straight into a regular job in retail. He describes the next few years as aimless until he met his wife to be in 1998. They married in 2000, and 20 years later, they have three children and two beautiful grandsons. Man, you were, you're a couple of years older than me, and you got grandkids. Look at you. What, a, what can I say? When you have it all, you have it all, George. <laughs> <laughs> as the founder of the Think Network, Gary does not have big dreams. He have He has massive realities gary lives a life of never been done befores think network is europe's number one empowerment platform specializing in inspiration connecting and facilitating we're going to get into all of that later um let's just get into it man gary he's got a tedx background he's an organizer we we got a lot to talk about i don't even want to mention it in the bio because uh i want to talk about it right in the interview because that's how we do here so thank, thank you man for being here again it's uh Right now it's three. It's four p.m. It's nine p.m. over there in in Northern yeah. Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The capital of the universe, uh, George. The capital of the universe, <laughs> or as they say, the the Farmingdale of the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, all, 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 all is good, my friend. Let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to start with where we start on every interview, Gary. This is a leadership podcast. Gary, are you a leader? I'm a. I, I'm. I'm a leader, but I wasn't a born leader. 
I am certainly a leader. Um, I feel that I'm a leader. Um, you know, the, the term thought leader is banded about um, with different, different, from different people, particularly when you're a guy that has got, um, that visualizes an awful lot of, uh, of, of circumstances and goals and successes and, um, uh, and things they achieve. So yeah, I class myself as a leader, but I wasn't always one. Yeah, we're, we're going to get into that story a little bit, but I, I want to hear from you. What, what are your thoughts on leadership? Tell me to you, what is the meaning, the definition of a leader? I think a leader, George, George, you know, uh, uh, that's a very good question. And if you had asked me that a few years ago, it would have been it would have been hi hierarchical that I would have been saying, you know, that you know, you're a leader if you are X, Y and Z, CEO, managing director. Not so much anymore. You can be a leader in a family. You can be a leader in a friend group. You can be a leader in a mastermind. You can be a leader online. You can be a leader in your own family. You know, um, for me, for me, a leader is somebody, somebody that has the courage to put their best foot forward when other people maybe won't or can't or 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 just don't have the same don't have the same desires that you have. Um, a leader is somebody that's not 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 afraid to make a mistake. That is somebody that is humble enough to know that that whilst they are making the first move as a leader um that they don't know at all that they that they are humble enough to take counsel that they that that a leader is somebody that they're not out in their own they they're out in their own and they're not out in their own at the same time you know they're yeah. the team team for everything we for everything not me we yeah yeah i love that you know? uh and, and I love I love that you say that you weren't always a leader. I know a lot of the story, and we're going to get into it uh, sort of chronologically. Yeah. Um, but that that's the thing, right? And, and and this podcast for those that are listening the first time, I know Gary's going to share this with his network, and we're going to grow immensely in Northern Ireland and the whole UK and all of Europe, really. Um, yes. But you know, this podcast for those that are listening for the first time, this is uh, a podcast that centers around leadership. Now, now leadership is a funny word, right? And and Gary is well shit, we did we did 44 episodes in our first season. We go once a week. Uh I think 39 of them were live, right? So so 39 of them were live. We're in the fourth episode of uh season 2 right now. And so we've done, you know, in the vicinity of 35 to 40 interviews, give or take. Um and every definition of leadership was different. You know, the, these interviews are not the same by any means, but they start the same because I love looking at that juxtaposition of that definition. Um, what struck me about you, and we're really going to dive into this heavily. I hope I hope you're planning on being up late tonight. I hope you had your coffee tonight. No, no problem. Anything, <laughs> go anywhere, and let's let you know you have my time. Yeah. So what struck me, man, about this is we have a lot of parallels in our journey, and when we get to that point. Uh, that, that time in your, <laughs> in your life, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, but what, what I love about you is that you, you've learned, right? You, you, you don't regret life. You don't regret mistakes. I don't even know if you call them mistakes. You don't regret anything that's happened in your life. Everything has been a learning experience and has brought you to where you are today. That's very similar for me, uh, to my yeah. definition of, of leadership. Uh, my, my first TEDx talk. The big theme was mistake equals practice. Mistake equals practice. That's what I really impressed yes. upon the crowd. It was so important for me to have them understand that what I do as a leader is I teach people that you can fuck up. You can be a fuck up. Yeah. And guess what? Yeah. You can fix it. You can turn it around. Yeah. You could be a good dude still and be a fuck up. We can exist on two different yeah. planes <laughs> simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so let, let's get into the story. Cause I want to hear your take on all of this and the way we do this, uh, again, for those listening for the first time, this is a very Howard Stern esque type of interview, right? We do, mm -hmm. we do a, a sort of chronological deep dive into a person's life. We talk about these spark moments, spark moments. Uh, the definition on this show are these moments where good, bad, or indifferent, they were moments in your life where you can look back right now, you know, you know, that was a pivotal moment. That led you in a certain direction, whether it was good or bad. So we're going to talk about all of those. We're going to talk about these unconventional journeys. And, you know, Gary right now, he's an influencer. Gary matters 
in this world. I don't mean influencer in the social media uh, definition of the word. I mean he's a person that creates change and he matters in this world. And he didn't always think that he did. Um, and so that journey is important for you guys as the audience to hear, right? Because I want somebody who was in my shoes 10 years ago, Gary's shoes 10, 20 years ago, to go, well, shit, can I turn it around like that? that that's the goal of this whole thing. So good. let's move on to the interview. So uh, let's go younger. You left school uh, and worked. Uh, you didn't go to university right away. You worked in a supermarket um, as your first sort of career foray, right? Uh, 150 yeah. pounds a week you were making. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was stacking shelves. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you moved on after that to work in a factory called Step Two, um, yeah. where you worked for quite a while as a production manager. Um, and I, uh, when I did my research, and and we do some research on this show, my man. <laughs> we good go man, deep. good man. We go deep. Um, this was actually the one of the original owners of Little Tykes, who split from the company right. and started his own rival company. Right. So yes, how long were you yes. there for? I was there from the day it opened to the day it closed. Uh, no, I had no, I had no integral part on it closing, but it was, <laughs> I was there for five years and, um, they came over to Europe to dominate the European market, but there was, they didn't take into consideration, um, uh, exchange, exchange rate fluctuation and the cost of delivering the, the, the goods into Europe and our weather. They didn't take, would you believe it? They didn't take into consideration the weather. A lot of the to toys are outdoor toys. So obviously they would sell better in better climates. Sure. Um, it was a, a quite a fundamental that they didn't take into consideration, but um, that was cited as the reason for their demise. So, but I had the be I had some of the best days of my life there as well, George. To be honest, believe it or not, some of my working days. You know, when you're, you know, as much as I might have had certain uh, private mindset hangups, let's say, you know. They're, they're some of the best days of my life as well because I was young. I was, let's say, you know, less, hadn't been through as many battles. And um, I was young, married. I was young. I was, wasn't married long. I was starting a family, buying my first house, a, a lot of firsts and uh, good good times of that particular period. Yeah. So, so I want to hear, because we're going to ask this at certain points of your career, what was the mindset of, of, of young Gary back then? You know, before before the factory closed down, what was your mindset back then? Just being a, a you know a production worker in the factory, you know, freshly mm. being married, starting a family. What was your mindset back then? And when I say mindset, I mean, yeah. what did you want out of life? You know, what were the goals? What, what how did you think back then? Back back then, I was achieving my goals: buying my home, having my children, getting married. Um, you know, I was achieving my goals. <clears throat> I always knew, George, would you believe this here? I always knew as much as I didn't have the courage to express it. I'm going to say, for want of a better term, felt different. Um, and I, and I, I, I'm, I'm using that loosely, that term. But, but I've seen other people prepared to spend their life in these places. And, and, and this was their life. And that's what their father's done and the father's before them. And I just knew that I had more in me to offer. Not that there was anything wrong with doing what or their their view, because the world needs all all types to make it go round. You know? Yeah. If there's no if there's no followers, there's no leaders. You know? So and if there's no leaders, there's no followers. So like so I always knew, but I never really had the courage to explore it or to to talk about it. I just I fell into that. I'm going to say that that trap of this will do this will this will do me this you no know, this is this is my life now. Even yeah. though I knew, even though I knew I had more to offer, so that was my mindset. Um, I probably spent too much time in my own head, um, not getting out of my own way, worrying about what people thought, worrying about what people how people viewed me, which is important to a point but not to the point where it holds you back. Yeah. It's important to keep your reputation intact as best you can. Um, who can say they've always done that? Because I haven't. I've made mistakes. Um, but I was too, I was way too risk adverse. I was way too in my own head. And I was my biggest stumbling block. Yeah. That's how I would describe my mindset. 
Yeah, and it, it, it's a very introspective of you to, to be able to look back and, and see that. Uh, and, and again, this is where I just find so many parallels with our journeys because really this was where I was at uh, at that age as well. It was really the same yeah. thing, and I, and I was my own my own stumbling block. I was my own, my own problem. And I, I wasn't sure about how to get around that. Um, but let, let's move on with the journey. So, so life happened. So for a guy that, and I don't want to say that you settled, but you know, it's interesting that you knew that there was something about you, something yeah. special and that's cool. And I, and by the way, I've also heard you say in interviews that you don't think that people have special skills or, or that they have, um, uh, are born with the special skills. I like set. a talent. Yeah, like a talent. Like a talent. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what it, would you say that good. thing was inside of you that that you just knew was was special? Um, it could very well come from relationships within families that maybe, maybe I'm going to say with maybe, maybe I felt maybe I felt suppressed by within my family and that I wasn't getting to 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 be my best me. I yeah. wasn't being encouraged to be my best me. I wasn't given opportunity to flourish to be the best me, and and that's not said with any malice either. That's said with you know that's said with with with, with I'm going to say even love. Like it's 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 just the situation that the emotional environment that I was in. So I'm going to say I think being suppressed made me know that I that I could have that I was ready to springboard. Yeah, that, you know, I hope that makes sense at all. What I'm trying to oh, say. Oh man, it's like we're brothers from another mother. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm telling yeah. you, this is, uh, uh, and we'll get into it a, a little bit later on. Yeah. But this, this is. I'm interested to know that about you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, when I'm on your podcast, well, <laughs> yes. no, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit when when we get to that. But that's, uh, it's a familiar feeling for me, and I love that you say there's no malice there because it's the same with me. It's all love. Um, a, any of that that I, in, in a professional way with some family, um, I, I did feel that same thing. It was sort of stunted, whether it was in my own head or not. Um, and I, man, do I appreciate I did not appreciate it then. And I didn't know how to handle it then. And that's why I sort of broke out and went wild um, yeah. and blew my life up, right? Yeah. Um, you know, but looking back now, God, did I appreciate because it, it turned me into the worker that I am now and, and was the reason I was able to push myself hard. So yeah, man, I yeah, totally, same, totally understand that. Um, I'm the same George, George, I've used that, see that, uh, feeling of inadequacy or that feeling of insecurity or that feeling of not being good enough. I use that as fuel yeah. to, to not to excel, but to keep going. Yeah. There's different. There's there's other instances that my life that will come across, come up to that I use to excel. But that those that particular feeling, I use to keep going no yeah. matter what. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Um, and so with, with this mindset, you know, you're sort of first getting started out in your in your. I don't even want to say your professional life, just life, because it's like yeah. when you get young, married young. I was married young as well. Um, when you get married young. You know, you're starting out your career and you kind of don't know where you're going right now. There's a sense of just as long as I could be the provider um, and, and be the husband and the dad, everything's OK. I feel whole about myself. Yes. But you were in a position where through no fault of your own, uh, this factory shut down. Um, That's right. And you were left one day with a thousand pound severage pack, severance package. Yep. Um, yep. And you had to go home to a pregnant wife. Uh, that That's you had right. to support, you had a mortgage, you had everything, and so I love yeah. the story that I heard about you. You drove around, you were really nervous to go home, wondering how how to tell your wife this, and instead you went to a local shopping center, being the person yep. you are, and you walked from store to store looking yep. for a job. Yeah, that's a true story, man. Honestly, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah, I remember. I remember coming home to my wife, and I didn't want to walk in the door and tell her I had no job, so um, I drove into town parked up in town and it didn't it wasn't a shopping center it was like a street this oh. this town the town center it's all pedestrian where we live sure. um it's not a big enough town where i live to have a shopping center but uh we i walked in and out of every shop just asking them had they any work said i've just been made redundant i'm married i've just got married um my wife's pregnant and i really need a job have you got a job what do you want to do i said anything anything um i'd never worked with the public before though 
I'd never I'd never been selling things before, so I wasn't that confident to do that. But um, and and I walked around the town and I went in and out of I'm going to say maybe forty shops, and one shop the guy came out to me the the manager came out to me and said, "Come on over here into this office," and we went in and sat in the office and he he, he offered me the job there and then and. Uh, and I, I was nervous about taking it, though, because it was a sales job, but dealing with the public. And I was still too shy. I was still too introverted in my mind. I couldn't get out of my own way, George. I thought, I'm no good at this. How am yeah. I going to be able to talk to people? They're not going to want to buy from me. I'm not good enough. That's what I was thinking. I can't do this. Sure, you've never done it before. You know, um, you've worked in a factory where you didn't have to deal with the public. You didn't have to be like your personality didn't have to be on point. Yep. you know, in pub in a public face and in a public facing way. So um I I uh I bear with me one second, sorry. Yeah. I just want to put this in here. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, and uh I am I back on your screen yet? Yeah. Yeah. Um and I I I I what I took the job. Um I went home and I talked to my wife and my wife talked me into taking the job, said, listen, you'll be amazing at it. And uh, I took the job and um, I worked hard. Uh, my confidence grew. Um, my father-in-law and my wife were instrumental in me being successful. They they talked me up um, and and the harder I worked, the better I got. Yeah. Um, you know, so the rest yeah, of the story. What was cool about it was, uh, I think that's, you know, in the story that I know about you, that was the first moment of just sheer blinded um, will to succeed, right? It was, yeah. you were made redundant, which for our American listeners out there, uh, made redundant just means he was let go, he was laid off. Um, <coughs> uh, you were made redundant and, and you went out there and you didn't want to go home until you found something else. And what wound up happening too, this was actually a little bit more money and it was a straight up Monday through Friday, nine to five job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Much better. It was, uh, on, yeah. It was 10 times better. It was more money. I had my severance pay. I had a couple of weeks holidays. They started the job. I negotiated a couple of weeks holidays. They actually started the job Yeah. and, uh, and life was good. Yeah, life was very life was very good. That was that was my first example of demonstrating what I now know as resilience. Yeah, you, the ability the ability to bounce back and bounce back quickly. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't realize I was even demonstrating that George at the time. Yeah, I was an uncon unconscious competent. I think they call it. Yeah, and we rarely do, uh, especially along that journey to leadership. It's it's funny when you can get to a point where you know you and I might be today, and and I can confidently say. I'm a leader. You can confidently say you're a leader, but back then you would never put that word on it. Right. No. No. Totally different mindset. Um, and so yeah. you, you did your thing, man. You did your thing. You worked hard. You, you eventually became, uh, a manager and assistant manager within two and a half years there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, amazing story, which caused a huge pivot. It's funny. Cause I had done all my research on you. And then I listened to this one interview where I didn't know about, this piece. And this was to me, one of the most incredible parts of the journey where uh, uh, a, a local realtor, a uh, real estate agent came in and was buying appliances uh, for some of the rental properties that he managed. Correct. So yes, correct. Uh, if you want, why don't you jump into the story there? Cause I'm sure you tell it a lot better. Yeah. 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 Well, this guy was coming in and out of the shop and he was buying, he was buying electrical appliances for the, his rental properties. And you're going back now to about 2005 to 2006, roughly. More like 2005 at that stage. And By the way, the, the height, and I don't know how it was there, but here, the very height of the real estate market. Yeah, well, it was approaching <laughs> the height over here, right? Yeah. So, and um, he was buying and buying and buying. And me being me, I'm, I'm very much a people person. I like to get to know people, particularly when I'm selling them things and there's conversation and, you know, um, what, what, you know, what does he do for a living and all the rest of it. Anyway, we struck up a bit of a, a loose friendship, let's say. And straight, that was the first time, George, that I seen an opportunity to make breakthrough. To, I, it was the first time that I seen an opportunity to, I'm going to say, change my life. Yeah. 
you know, not just achieve, not just maintain the status quo, you know, not just go from the factory and another job that was another 50 or 60 pound a week, which was okay. That's a week's shopping at the time. And like, but you no, know, it's not life changing. It's just yeah. slight life improvement. But this, I could see for the first time a life changing opportunity. And I don't know if it was because of the place in life that I was at or I had seen how I was able to make something happen out of nothing by being made redundant and then getting another job in the same day. And maybe I, maybe that gives me a confidence in myself that I wasn't even thinking about at the time. And anyway, the, we t- I talked to this, 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 this real estate guy and um, he told me about, you know, uh, uh, how easy it was to get the mortgages at that time for the, for the for the properties, and I thought I should be doing this. So anyway, I didn't buy a property at the time for um, for for investment. What I did do was I bought a bigger house, a nicer house, and and it, it's funny because the the place where I bought the house was a place. And a Sunday, me and my wife would have went out in the car, George, around the nicest areas. And we would have said to each other, someday, I would have said to her, someday I'll buy you a house in there. Yeah. So, and it was, the, it was the nicest part of town. Yeah. It's where all, it was, it was the, the, it was, it was the place. And we used to drive past it and think someday. And I knew I could do it, but I didn't know how. I didn't know the how, but I knew I had the desire to do yeah. it. So long story short, I did it. Bought a house. Um, I was able to raise the capital. I was working um, steady. I had a sustainable income. I was able to 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 um, sell my house with a, at a good profit because we were at the property. The house we're at the property boom. The house I was buying was a new build, so it wasn't going on up in price. I was able to secure it at a fixed price, whilst my house was going up in price. Yeah. Um. So we did. We bought it. And I wasn't in there very long that I started to think, right, investment properties. And I just got into the whole world of, I was able to buy, buy I get buy to let mortgages and all the rest of it. At that time, the banks were handing out 100% mortgages. Yeah. Um, because it was a no oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah. L- l- lend you 100,000 pound now, sure, it'll be worth 130 in three months. Yeah. So um, I did that. And I I accelerated very quickly through that market so much so that the guy that that introduced me to the property market I bought his estate agency. Bought his estate agency. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Incredible. So, so within yeah. a couple of years, um, <clears throat> from what I understand, from within a couple of years, you were managing twenty to thirty of your own properties, uh, yeah. and you eventually bought the the agency from him, <clears throat> and you were living the high life, right? Yep. Um, but the high life wasn't the best version of Gary. No, no. Right? The high so, life. The, the high life. I was. I was new. New money, George. Yeah. I was new money, and I didn't have the maturity. I didn't have the experience. I didn't have the wisdom, and I didn't have the people around me that I should have had around me. And a, mo- a, a fool and his money are easily parted, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I, I was a full, I was a full, I was a full that had the ability to spot opportunity and capitalize, but um, I ultimately I was a full, and I behaved incorrectly. Material possessions became my god, um, not strictly true, but you know what I mean. I I, I abused my 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 money, and um, I wasn't the best version of myself for sure. Yeah, um, and, and this was the part, Gary, about the story that just. You know, there were a lot of similarities, but, um, well, let me, let me tell you something I used to do, uh, pretty much. What is it? 2021, pretty much 10 years ago. We're coming up on almost the 10th anniversary of the pinnacle of George's shitheadedness that I like to call it. Um, I, I used to love, I had this big job in Manhattan where I made a ton of dough, um, and I used to love parking my BMW right out front. And knowing that I would get ticket after ticket after ticket, I used to do it anyway because I just wanted my car to be right there where I can get it, uh, you know, whenever. And by the way, also had a paid parking garage space two blocks down. 
in the city, but I still loved parking in the front where I would get tickets. And I didn't care because a hundred dollar ticket was, eh, you know, whatever, let's just pay it and move on. And then I hear an interview with you where you had your uh, BMW 630, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did yeah. the exact same thing. Yeah. So you know the score, man. Oh, yeah. I know the score. <laughs> yeah. I, and you, George, George, do you know how big my ego was at the time? Yeah. One of the reasons I bought the 630, I, sh- I share this here just so that somebody else doesn't do the same thing. Not because I'm proud of it, because... I don't give a shit now. I can talk about this here. I'm comfortable. I know me, and I'm comfortable to to, to have to to tell the worst and and the worst and all. Yeah. I bought the car because I like the car, but I also bought it because of who owned it, and that, that was that feel good. It was the it was the the top man in Coca Cola in uh, Ireland that was trading it in for an Aston Martin Vantage or whatever, and I thought oh, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Oh, that was you know, his what? his actual car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I thought. I thought, fuck it, I'll, I'll, I'd buy that. And like, it was, I can't remember, it was 50 grand or whatever it was. It was just silly money. And I just, it was snow off a bitch, George, at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I only had a three series, so you were definitely a bigger asshole than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so when I heard that part of the story, that was where it just, I was like, oh man, this dude needs to come on today because I got to get this interview in. I, I knew this would be a lot of fun to talk about. And it's, it's horrible, right? Because that looking back, it wasn't fun. It was it was gluttonous on both yeah. of our parts. Uh the parking Temple. ticket thing. Temple it's is what it's it was. silly. Man, right now and, and and by the way, you know, and we'll get into this, but for me starting my life over the right way and building mm-hmm. my business the right way and doing the, I've never been more successful uh, in life, I want to say that I'm not yeah. just talking about money. Um, never been yeah. more successful and happy in life. And now I would be very upset with myself to get a parking ticket. Cause it's just a waste of money. You know, George, it hap- uh, George, it happened to me recently. It, uh, I'll, I'll tell you where it happened to me. And we'll do, and I know this is a way on in the conversation, but it happened to me on the day of my TED event. <laughs> and uh, and I came out, but do you want to know something? Did I care? I was as high as a kite. And, but <laughs> I, 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 I I didn't care for a different reason this time. Yeah, I was just high as a kite. Excitement. Just, yeah, we just yeah. delivered the show of a lifetime, first ever uh, what TEDx Dairy London Dairy Woman event, and I got the ticket and I had it paid before I got home. I thought I ain't carrying that negativity around. No, I was to- I was told by a, a clever guy one time. He said, "When you get a parking ticket, if you ever get one or get a fine or whatever, pay it like that. Don't leave that negativity sitting looking at you in a windowsill, sitting in the back of your mind like a cloud. That's I great. need to do this. I need to do- get That's it. Great. Get it. Pay it in the bun. I had it paid within five minutes. That's great. That's great. <laughs> um." You know, and, 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 and so talking about this gluttony and, and the way that you and I both treated success back then, um, then a shift came, right? Uh, and, and we all know this and, and I, I assume based on what I've, uh, you know, what I've heard about you and, and what went down, the UK was no different than the United States here. The market crashed, everything completely shifted, especially the real estate market, the money dried up. And it turned to ruin for you in terms of uh, your investments. Um, you went through an insolvency, which I, I'm, yep. I'm assuming that's the same as like a bankruptcy here. Yeah. Right. Yep. So you went through an insolvency, um, which funny enough, you know, I, I, hearing it was very painful for me. Just hear, hearing your part of the story. Um, I, too, had a I had a fall where for me, it was more not just business shifted, but it was my ego just broke through the roof and uh, eventually I blew up my own life and I was left with nothing. I mean, career mm-hmm. and family. I went through a divorce and, and, and the whole deal and lost friends. And um, that's a tough time uh, to go through. Now, when I heard your take on this part of it, because the, the good thing for you was uh, the marriage, the family stayed intact. Uh, although you did say, um, and, and this is another thing that's, that struck out at me was you did say that during that time, um, although you love your family very much and, and they're always, you know, a, a major priority for you, you weren't prioritizing them at the time. No, I was prioritizing me. Yeah. 
Um, now, I would put it into context and say, I was chasing the dream, George. And if you had asked me why I wasn't spending time at home that I should have been spending, if you asked me why I wasn't uh, giving my kids the attention that they deserved, I would have said to you, I'm doing this for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I justified it in my mind. But what is all the money in the world when your wife is is not happy, when your children are looking out the window looking for you? Yeah. Like, what's that? See, when you get to that tipping point, then what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You know, now, don't get me wrong. I work very hard now. And my wife will tell me I'm on the phone too much now occasionally and all the rest of it. But, like, you know, it's only fine lines now. It's, it's only it's, yeah. it's only it's only gray areas now. But but beforehand it was the whole way. Yeah. Like, you know, if I if I wanted to, you know, do whatever I was doing, I justified it that I was chasing the dream for my family. Yeah. And ultimately, if I'd asked my family what they wanted, it was me they wanted. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I'm only yeah. I'm only talking about a short period of one in my life as well, by the way. A couple of years, you know, year and a half maybe. Same. Same, same, same for me, but I, I know for me how painful it was. Um, man, would it have been different if, if the family stayed intact though. And so I'm, I'm yeah. happy for you that, that for you, Fuller. that's how it went. Um, what was it like from a, from a business perspective, just losing all of that and, and just being left with a, a complete reset? Um, George, to be honest, and I have to, I'm going to be very, very honest. It's probably looks and sounds worse than it actually felt. And the reason I say that is because debt was building up, George. I was relieved yeah. when the debt, when, the, when, when, when these people couldn't torture me anymore. When, when the mortgage, comp the anxiety left me about losing houses, I lost them. Yeah. I, had nothing, I had nothing else to lose. And it's like when people say when the when you hit rock bottom, the only way is up. That's true, you know. So I I was rock bottom, but at, and in moments it didn't feel like rock bottom. It felt like it's relief. a fresh a, a relief. I felt the word is relief, George. Humbled yeah. and relief. I was humbled. Don't get me wrong. I was the big shot. I was a small town. I lived on. I live on ten ten fifteen thousand people, and you can imagine I was standing out like a like a light bulb. And um, and I still stand out like a light bulb, but not for the reasons like that. And um, I it it humbled me, but it relieved me. Yeah. It gave me enough. It gave me a, a clean slate to rebuild with more morals, rebuild my demonstrate my integrity to to me, to my family, and to. Let's say everybody as well at the same time, even though I shouldn't really give a shit. But I just, I suppose for the pride of my family, I wanted to demonstrate my values and integrity and 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 the good person that I am and I was to to outwardly. Yeah. So I, that's that's how I felt at the time, George. Yeah, yeah, amazing, man, uh, amazing. It's uh, it takes a a strong mindset to be able to get through that with with positivity. Um, and, and for me, I think that was the beginning of just a, a new chapter for you because you still had light in you or you found the light in you during that time. Um, I want to shift though, because that's not the only reason that you, um, turn things around. So I'm going to say a name to you and I want you to tell me all the things you think when you hear this name, Marshall McCall. Um, uh, Father, mentor, um, w wisdom, game changer, um, shine, a shining light in my life. Um, somebody, somebody that believed in me when <clears throat> when I didn't. Somebody that seen something in me that. I knew deep down I had, as I said, when I was younger, I knew I had something or I felt differently and looked at things differently. But when somebody else sees it and and then you then believe it, you know, because when you're younger, you only think it, Yeah. you know, you, you, you know, you're thinking, you think differently. You think, you know, you're thinking differently than your friends. You know, you want more out of life. 
you have the courage to do it. But when somebody else sees it and says it, then you don't think it. You you know it. Yeah. You but you believe it. Not only do you believe it, you know it. And he installed he installed the knowing in me, the faith in me, and the belief in me. And um, forever grateful. Forever yeah. grateful. Yeah. So of course, Marshall was your your late father in law, and he led you yeah. to. <clears throat> From what I hear in the story, one of the most pivotal spark moments of your life, he told you in that moment that you mm. could turn to drinking and drugs and, and the life that goes with that, or you could turn around and get educated so that you can make better decisions. Yes. And yes so that does, led you mm-hmm. at 30 to attend university. Uh, That's right. And, and from what I what I read about you, you, you didn't come from a family that attended uh, collegiate level schooling, so there wasn't really a pathway to university for you. No, no, life, life I've never, I've never been done before, George. Never been done before. I had a good life. Don't get me wrong. My my mother and father had good jobs, worked hard. I had everything that I wanted, but um, there was limited. I'm going to say limited thinking. Um, Nobody had ever been to university before. He said to me, why don't you go to university? And I remember the day he said it. <clears throat> and I said, to, I said to my wife on the way out in the car, uh, out leaving the house, I said, I don't know what, I think he's gone mad. I think he's gone mad. I said, university? I said, sure, well, how, how would I even get in? I don't have my maths GCSE. You know, my, I, I, I wasn't you know, numerate to a level where I would get into somewhere like that. Um, I said, I don't have the qualifications to get into that. that. And I... But he planted the seed with me, yeah. And he planted the seed with me, and I dismissed it for about a week or two, I think. And then I started to. It started to. It did something. It, the, what he said landed with me, and I started to explore options. Let's say, and the options were good. The options were good in that, um, if you could demonstrate life experience. Uh, to the university uh, panel, they would consider letting you on the course. That's that. That was the first barrier. Yeah. And uh, the second one was finance. So the course was three and a half, four thousand pounds. But I obviously didn't have three pounds fifty. I didn't even have a car anymore. Didn't have the six thirty anymore. You know, um, that was taken away in a low loader in front of me, in front of in front of all my neighbours, and. Um, so I, I researched and I found a, a, a company that were handing out grants for people like me that had fallen in hardship, that wanted to do better, I had an opportunity, and um, I applied, I got the funding, they said, I'll, if you get in, we'll give you the funding. So I contacted people, a, a guy that I knew at university, in the university, a lecture who introduced me to the decision maker. And I remember the phone call very clearly. And at the end of the phone call, he said, you're in. And that was less than four weeks after I'd went bankrupt. Less Incredible. than four weeks. And George, George, do you see when I look back, George, I, I, I'm going to say this here and you'll never, ever hear me often say this. And if you've ever listened to the other podcasts, you will have heard me say the opposite. In fact, I'm proud of myself now. When I look back at that, that was the second time that I showed resilience in a big way. And when I look back, I'm very, very proud of myself. Um, I'm proud of all my family. I'm proud of my wife for sticking with me. I'm proud of my children for continuing to love me. And I'm proud of myself for continuing to have courage to go on. Um, And George, do you see going to that university? I got public transport to that university. I had to walk a mile from the other side into college every day. And the piss and rain, and um, and I got the I got the damn degree, you know. Yeah, um, yeah amazing. So I'm very very proud of it, man. Amazing. Yeah. And before we move on, that that seems to be um, your calling card, from what I see with decision making. It seems to be where a seed gets planted, and and you think mm-hmm. on a decision for a couple of weeks, which is smart. Which is smart. Mm-hmm. You, you don't you don't always pull the trigger right away, uh, but those decisions seem to be the the big ones in your life that really make a, yeah. a huge difference. George, when I decide something, only the man above will stop me doing it. Yeah, I, you know, through ill health or through you know, change my mind or whatever. And but and, and I'm not I'm not 
I'm not I'm not overly religious, more spiritual or more you know in touch with my Christian beliefs. But I'm not overly religious. Like, like I don't really care about re- different factions and stuff. But um, if I decide if I if I lock in like a heat seeking missile and something, if I lock in on something and I think I'm doing that. Mm, in my adult life, ninety nine times out of a hundred, I do it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. love it, love it, and, and and I see that with your schooling because you even uh, had a half cock notion that you'd become a teacher, and you got your teaching That's certificate, right. and, That's and right. you, your father in law also <laughs> told you to pursue a master's, and after thinking That's on it right. for a while, you you made it happen, and you got funding uh, through San, Santander, and and. Right. Uh, and you got your master's too. You did stop it yeah. at the PhD though, because you knew yeah, your limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. Do you want to know something? How you, so, sometimes, sometimes you, you you have to just be honest with yourself, and yeah. uh, and 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 uh, that takes courage too, George. And and my father-in-law would tell me I'm wrong, probably, and he did at the time. But it's like it's this old saying: when you know, you know. Yeah. And I I knew in my heart. I was maxed out with education. Yeah. It may be, do you want to know something, George? It may be due to desire as well. I didn't desire it enough. Yeah. I actually, I actually was, sort of, I'm going to say talked into doing the masters, you know, but you have to, 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 to hit the great heights in life, whether it be in this podcast, you know, you do hitting the heights for your podcast or with your leadership training or with your speaking and all the rest of it. You will only achieve the great success. I mean, the truly great successes if you desire it enough. Yep. I actually didn't desire that level of education enough because I'm going to say this. I'm going to contradict myself and say maybe I could have done it if I had desired it enough. Yeah, right. And, and I see that in the way you talked about it too. I didn't think it was something that you couldn't do. Although I do completely understand the difference in the level of a PhD program versus a, an undergrad or, or a master's totally, totally different. Uh, yeah. and same thing with me. It's just something I would never, I would love to have it. Yeah. But I don't think I would desire it, uh, you know, enough to, to make something like that happen. This episode is sponsored by the new cohort of the Leadership Experience. Unconventional leadership brought to you by yours truly, the launch dad himself, George Andriopoulos. Our new cohort is starting soon. And not only do we still have the same four courses, that's right, the public thought leadership track, the career leader track, the entrepreneurship track, and of course, the podcast experience, we have our first graduate level up level inimitable, the newest one-on-one leadership class. This is for not only if you have taken the leadership experience core class before and are ready to graduate to the newest level, but for those that have experienced leadership and want to take it to a new level, inimitable is for you. I'm not even going to talk about it in this commercial. You're going to have to contact me. Check out the leadership exp dot com for details and to sign up for information inimitable is coming at you dm me for more info later guys um talk about for a minute before we move on you know we talked about your mindset way back early on young gary uh during this time this university time where you're 30 now and kids and family and you've had great success and great failure what's the mindset at that time hope hope I had a vision, I had a vision, George. I had a vision that my education was going to elevate me to a level where I would land the job that I wanted. Still wasn't thinking entrepreneurial. In fact, the entrepreneurial thing uh, was the last thing in my mind after crashing and burning. Sure. I wanted I wanted the safety of a corporate career with a big wage and a big leadership position. So I, I convinced myself that my education coupled with the experience that I had would position me for that. Yep. So, 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 my mindset was full of hope. And what about, what about that feeling deep down that you had early on that there was something special mm. knocking around in there? Where was that now? At that stage, it was it was kept in a box. Yeah. It was it was I had it safely away in a in a safety deposit box somewhere. It was there for. That was the tool I could bring out if I ever wanted to, but I was too scared at that moment to even let that 
Jack out of the box. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I I just put, I just put a lid in that and put it away. Yeah. Um. And at that time, at that time, I had changed as well, George. You know, I was my hands, my fingertips and hands were very badly burnt from an entrepreneurial my entrepreneurial activities. So I wanted security. It's just human nature. You go from you go from jump out of the fire. You know, you 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 you, you, you try not to jump into the frying pan, but you want you you want you want safety. When you're in danger, you, you, you look for safety. Yeah. And I was looking I was looking for safety. I wanted security. I wanted stability. That was one of the reasons that took me into the teaching thing, you know, teachers like safe job, school, you know, pension, uh two you know, two months holidays in summer, week in the cr- I was thinking, but that's not me, yeah. you know. That's not me, man. I'd be going in there and I'd be trying to change the size of the classroom or the I'd be trying to invent my own damn program or something you yeah. know and so but i didn't that that was me almost going against my own natural will yeah yeah you know so you finished the master's program um and, and i know you are where you are today and we're going to get into the whole speaking thing and think network um what was the road to there what happens after the master's after the master's i embarked on uh, various roles in industry um with varying levels of success um i just and i but here here here's what here's a here's a strategy that i had in my head and and it's a very crude strategy but like time wasn't time waits for nobody right time waits for nobody and i had it in my head i am going to get the job i want and if i'm not happy in a job or ain't going my way i will go to the next one now, that ain't good for anybody's CV, right? But I had this aggressive approach, let's say, to to climbing the career ladder or uh, getting the job that I truly was happy with. And yeah. here's the thing, George. I was never going to be happy with any of them. Yeah. Because the, re- the truth of the matter is I don't want to work for anybody. I want to work with people. I don't want to work for people yeah i want to and 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 that's the leader in me as well you know what i mean i want to i want i want to break new ground i want to do my thing i want to create magic i want to do things that haven't been done before i want to i want to make a difference in life and i'm not going to do that stand in the shop selling tvs yeah you know no disrespect to anybody that does that i did it and i was happy doing it in the moment but I have a bigger call and purpose in life, and that's what you're seeing now, and that's what I'm doing now, very successfully. Um, long may it continue, and uh, and it will. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, before we get to today and and everything you have yeah. going on today, I just want to talk for a second, if you're okay with it. Uh, yeah, anything. talk to me. Talk to me about um, losing Marshall. What what was that like for you? Worst moment of my life by a country mile um, that's five years ago just passed uh, five years ago on the 12th of December passed uh, oh 12th of December. 12th of December yeah hold on yeah, um, I have a thing over here that commemorates it um, it was in and around the 12th of December roughly I think it was 12th of December and um, um, Marshall was Marshall Mar- Marshall had Marshall had was was seven was, was he around 80, 80 years of age my he was my wife was a late one of let's say and um uh he 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 was there in the morning george and he was gone at night and uh you know i don't know if you've experienced um loss in your life like that you know in terms of uh somebody that you love dearly leaving you and going to new pastures or whatever yeah. but um if you have you'll know the feeling and if you haven't um you know uh, uh I don't wish it on anybody. And um, Marshall even just left a gaping hole in my life. For the next two years, me and my wife were an autopilot. Um, in terms of, we still had a family. My 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 we had at that time one one grandson. My three children. Um, I was working. I we I, the way I the best way I describe it, we went into coping like a coping mechanism. Where it was just. Life was blurry. Life was numb, um, and uh, 
that's that really, man. It is what it is. It's going to happen as all. Well. We're all passing through this life one way or the other. And that's that's part of the reason that I want to live my life big as well. That, that re-emphasized to me and highlighted to me to to live my life big. Yeah. 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 Um, off camera or next time we talk about this, ask me mm -hmm. about December 12th. All right. Okay. I will. Yeah. I will. Well, don't you worry. Uh, so, interesting. yeah, very interesting, <laughs> very interesting, scary, interesting. Um, yeah. So here we are today, Gary, CEO, founder of right CEO of the Think Network. Um, talk to me about Think Network. What is it? Think Network is the number one, the fastest growing independent empowerment platform in Europe. Um, it is a, a platform where we help and support others be the best versions of themselves. How do we do that? How do we not do it, George? We do it through um, our coaching, through our one-to-ones, through our webinars, through our accountability groups, through our think tanks, through our exclusive masterminds, through our empowerment webinars, through our empowerment series, through our membership site launching at the end of the month, through our network, through our uh, the advice and the support and the love that, that, that I personally receive and our members receive through the connection and ultimately opportunity, opportunity. We're here to serve. I believe in life we should, we should have a servant mentality with boundaries, of course, not to your own detriment. You know, make sure your own cup's half full or full before you're, before you're, before you're, you're, you're giving it away. But do you have a servant mentality, you know? And, 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 and I know you have that, and, and you know I have that, um, the, the, through conversations we have and collaborations that we, that we have going forward and, and, and current. And, and, and um, I believe that's the sort of people that I, that I love and enjoy meeting. I'm not just saying this because it's me and you chatting now, but I have enjoyed getting to know you. And I've buzzed off you from afar in terms of being motivated yeah. and seeing how, you, seeing how you conduct yourself. And see how um, how you know you've got that servant mentality that 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 I that I get that I am attracted to to building relationships with people and that's see everything I've just said that's at the core of everything that we do yep. because I make sure it is that's my passion is drip fed through everything that we do yeah. Yeah, I love that, man. I love that. Um, it, it's uh, I've checked out the platform. It, it really is an incredible platform. You have such good stuff going on. We have so many similarities too in in our platforms as well. Of course, with you know my company Launchpad Five One Six, and then the leadership experience uh, division yeah. of that. Um, ton. So so we're gonna have a lot of collaborations. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about some of the collaborations and how we have a we're a kindred spirit in in other ways as well uh public speaking right we're both public speakers and we both have an affinity slash obsession with uh with ted and so i will say that we'll talk about the speaker first gary did his first tedx talk at tedx cookstown right yes the first ever speaker at a, a mid ulster in our country at that event that's yeah. another first ever that's another first ever and he finished. He finished it with a with a resounding yeah. yes. <laughs> Loved yeah. it. Loved yeah, it. Great. Yeah, that was pre. That was premeditated. <laughs> great talk. Great talk. And what was cool about that was, um, and, and this is how the the world works, right? This is, um, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. listening out there, man. Leadership and and synergy and networking. Networking is a is a dirty word here sometimes. Networking is a pain in the ass uh, sometimes, but man, when it's done the right way with authenticity um, and, and servant leadership, as Gary mentioned, and people that actually yeah. want to be there for each other and they're not there just yeah. to throw a business no. card in your face and go, oh yeah, 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 yeah. you know, I, I'm, uh, you know, by my service. That's not what it's about. Authentic networking, authentic leadership, authentic servant leadership is about thinking of the other person first, how can I help you? And it comes yeah. back to you. And so I noticed in, in, in Gary's TEDx talk, he starts telling the story of, are you Darby? Well, shit. I've heard that story before from my good friend, Dr. Greg Reed, right. Who wrote, um, you know, a, a ton of books. He's contracted with the Napoleon Hill foundation. He's got a, a relationship with them and three feet from gold, the whole deal he starts talking about. And I'm like, Dude, and before I could even start the introduction, 
Yeah, before it could even he, he, start. He, he, he sent me these. He sent, he sent yes, me these. That's him. Talk. That's him. That's him. And so before I could even start that introduction, I, I noticed on my Instagram they were chatting already, and they, and and I reached out to 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 Greg, of course, to to say this guy's a good dude, and reached out to yeah. to Gary, and and that relationship was born, and that's how this whole thing works. So, um, just talk to me for a minute about the Napoleon Hill and and Three Feet from Gold, and where you got that whole attraction from with that story. Hey, do you want to, do you want to know something, George? The the Three Feet from Gold story, I, as you know, is in the Napoleon Hill book, Think and Grow Rich. But that's not where I had heard of it first. I had heard of it banded about um, online in some forum about the Three Feet from Gold story. Somebody was telling the story or it was wrote down somewhere. I can't actually remember where I first heard it. But ultimately, I went on to them to study where it, came, their, their, where it originated from with Think and, the Think and Grow Rich book. And man, can I resonate with that or what, yeah. you know, and any, anybody that is on a pursuit of achieving their own greatness and, and, and looking to make the world a better place through their goals and through their vision, um, they, every, I think anybody can relate to the persistence and the, 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 the consistent uh, turning up that you must have and the bumps in the road that you do have, and the moments of uh, that where you feel like giving up, um, and and I certainly had felt all of the above many many times. So I just I was that I was that I was. Are you Darby? You know, um, or or I wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, so it really really resonated with me. And then when I was asked to do a TED talk, it was a no brainer. You know, it was like, well, that's the first thing. I have many strings to my bow. Same as your good self, my man. Yeah. Many ideas I want to share. Many ideas. I, uh, another one that I'll be sharing is, is about having no limits, no boundaries and what you can. There's there's many, many, many ideas I'm going to share with the word. But yeah. that was the first one. That was the first one. That was the one I wanted to get off my chest. Love it. And um, so, and then, and then obviously Greg commented on a, a post that you were in at TEDx Derry London Derry, and then uh, random as hell. We just we just built the relationship, and like he's coming to the UK next year. He sent he sent me these books. This is uh, Napoleon one and Napoleon Hill's first editions. Um, you can't you can't even buy them, and uh, like. Uh, He's a good dude, man. That's a, that's a servant leader right there. I'll tell you yeah. a quick quick story. And if you if you when you have a chance, go listen back to the episode of the launch cast that Greg was on, and you'll oh, hear right. yeah. you'll hear the story. He was a, he was a guest on on our show. You'll hear the story of how we met. But one of my speakers at TEDx Farmingdale, um, my event that I executive produce, um, uh, had a funny story about how um, Greg had mentored him through through total. Um, total just like surprise reach out like this kid reached out to him and Greg invited him to his house it was a whole thing amazing story and uh, and I reached out to Greg um, towards the end there closer to the event that I just wanted to say hey man I just wanted you to know I had never talked to the guy before this kid that you've been mentoring that you mentored a couple of times and you did this great thing for he's doing all right man he's doing his thing he's giving this talk and he's putting all his work into it and sure enough, my fucking cell phone rings five minutes later, and it's Greg Reed. And I was like, "What?" And we've had a great relationship since then. Greg is. Yeah. Uh, Greg was actually supposed to speak at TEDx Farmingdale 2020. We shifted him to 2021 because hopefully it's a live event. We want him yeah. live with us. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, amazing dude. Amazing dude. Um, Speaking of TED, so so guys, uh, catch Gary's uh, TEDx talk at TEDx Cooks TEDx Cookstown. It was. Uh, Really, really cool talk. Um, love seeing your first talk, man. Uh, it, it just brought yeah. me back to my first TEDx talk. Yeah. Um, doing it and just getting those nerves out. And then, yeah. man, once you do that first one, you fucking set the animal loose. And then yeah. it's yeah. it's nuts. Yeah. I, I'm doing five. I'm going to do five of them straight up. Like, like yeah. I tell you now straight, I'm going to do five. Uh, five a night. Um, and uh, I'm doing, do you want to know something? I'm doing it because I can. Yeah. And because I'm going through, and because I've got five ideas, I've got fifteen ideas, uh, I've got fifty ideas, and I'm and I'm going to share them with the world. We're here one time. I'm going to go big. Um, one TED talk's not enough. 
Um, I've got many, many ideas, and it would be selfish of me not to get not to that's, get them out there. That's, that's what it's that's about, what brother. That's what it's about, brother. And that, and I know you're relentless with it. I'll tell real quick. Uh, we could talk about this part of it. Um, Gary had the the notion that he also wanted to be a TEDx curator, an organizer, an executive producer, and he wanted to do his own event. Uh, and I know you went through some shit, man. Right? You had you had quite a few rejections with those licenses. Yeah, four. I had three or four, man. Honestly, I lost count in the end up. Yeah. And uh, and and I was. Do you want to know something, George? I had I had people that should know better telling me to give up. Yeah. And and do you see when somebody? T- it's like it's like this here, George, right? You know, <clears throat> when you're taking counsel, make sure you take wise counsel. You know, if you take a less, if you take counsel from a fool, you'll act like a fool. If you take counsel from somebody that's clever, you'll act clever. You'll yeah. behave clever. You'll make a clever decision. And and it's like it's the same in a marriage. There should be no man or woman ever ever come between another man and a woman. If you ever hear of somebody saying to somebody, unless it's extreme circumstances, I think you should leave him or her. I think you shouldn't do that. That's wrong, yeah. right? And, I, and again, I said this at the outset, I ain't a big religious guy, but the Bible will tell you that, that no man should come between another man or a woman, right? And and that's my father-in-law talking to me, by the way, who was a very religious man. And these are golden nuggets that I took from him. And if they come from the Bible, then they come from the Bible. If they come from that book over there, think and grow rich, then they come from that. You know, so, and I remembered that. So this person that was coming in my ear saying to me, just give up on that there. Sure, you have your own empowerment platform. You don't need that. Now, that wasn't come from a position of love because this person didn't know me well enough. It came from somebody, let's say, in a similar genre. Um, I'll tell you off camera, but I couldn't say it on camera because yeah. it, it would get me into trouble and get you sure. into trouble for knowing it. And, <laughs> and, uh, Anyway, do you see when I got that message on Instagram? Just give up, Gary. I thought, hmm. I sat and I thought about that. And what they didn't know was at the time, I was thinking of giving up. I was three. I was RU Derby three feet from gold. Yeah. It was my third. It was my third failed attempt at getting the license that I had put my heart and soul into getting. And I was thinking of giving up. And they could very well have. I I could very well have listened to them, only something spoke to me at the last minute when I was just about to. I thought, fuck you. Yeah. And I didn't. And what I did do was, I did think about the three feet from gold story. I did go away and I did get wise counsel. And I came back this time like a scientist, like an expert. And I put in an application and I, I even put in the application, guys, if I have to come back here again, and again, and again, and again, I'm I'm going to continue to come back. You yeah. may as well give it to me. I, like, <laughs> Love I, it. I swear, I swear to God, George, that's in the application. And I even said in the application, I said, tell me who's better qualified to do it. I have been a, I have volunteered to be a TED team member at three events. I have been to five other events. I have been a TEDx judge in a, re- a regional hit to pick the next speaker at one of the local events. I, you know, I have applied three times. This is my fourth time. Who better, who is there better in this country to hold a TED event for the first time? Right. I said, you show me who it is. I walk away. Right. Then I got it. So, but boom, amazing. we got it. Yeah. Amazing. I I've been through that myself. I had, uh, I had one failed attempt at, at, at getting a license and man, it fired me up. And you know, that's the cool part about leadership and that's who, for me, that who I've become in leadership, man, I have a, um, I think I, I would call it a very well curated, uh, social media, uh, presence. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but when I say well curated, I mean an authentically curated presence because, um, a lot of people see positivity and great things on my timeline. And you know how they always say that people only show the best on social media. Well, I do that because of the positive person that I am and what I want to put out in this world. Right. So you're not going to ever air dirty laundry on social media. It's not really the way to operate, but in terms of professional failures, I mentioned those. I have, I remember in the last three years posting at least five or six times major events that I applied to speak at or whatever 
and I didn't get it. Uh, mm-hmm. my, my first attempt to get a license for TEDx Farmingdale failed. Uh, I applied for the TED fellowship failed. I applied to get on the main TED stage failed, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of international speaking gigs failed. And I post those letters every time on social media, mm-hmm. not as a fuck you to them, but as something to light the fire under my ass for me, because I know, yeah. and I respond to them. I'm coming back next year. I'm coming back mm-hmm. next time, whatever it is. And mm-hmm. I'm coming back whatever harder, it whatever mm-hmm. it takes, you know? So I, I love that about you, man. That That's amazing. And you yeah. did it and you got that license and you got two licenses. You did a TEDx women event and you did, uh, you're doing on February 8th, um, TEDx dairy London dairy. I have to ask you quick cause, and there's a funny story that go goes with this. What's with the dairy London dairy. Uh, give me yeah. the short version because my yeah. daughter, my, my, my five and a half month old daughter, um, her pediatrician, Dr. McCarthy, who has uh, uh, a similar Irish brogue to you, and um, we we were at her appointment, and I we were talking, and she was telling me uh, Joanna in, in Irish and yada yada, and I started talking about um, my association with TEDx Dairy London there, and I and I called it London Dairy, and she goes, "Don't ever hear, an, don't ever let a Northern Islander hear you call it London Dairy." And I was like, "Whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, George, George, George." The, the the one of the reasons I can tell you one of the reasons that the the event was never in the place where I live, which is it's actually both names. The the county which has different towns in it, including the city, is called Londonderry, but the actual city itself, the actual city, is Derry. But, but listen. It has got political connotations gotcha. because gotcha. because of uh, the whole divide between uh, Catholicism and Protestantism and all the rest of it. Gotcha. So anyway, the reason that it never <laughs> ever got one of the reasons it never got the license is would you hear this? They could never agree in the name. Oh. There was people applying for it calling it TEDx Dairy. Then there was and then and then and then a guy on the other side of the fence. I'm going to say uh, the different religion would call yeah. it would apply and he would call it TEDx Dairy London Dairy. And 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 Ted, then wow. were looking at it, knowing that they had a political hot potato in their hands. So guess what? I wasn't going to make that mistake. Ah, uh, that's great. That's great. Well, well. So so Gary got that license. Um, uh, uh, he put on the 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 TEDx Women event. The the TEDx Dairy London Dairy event is happening February eighth. There's going to be a live stream. I'm going to post. So this comes out Monday. What's today? The twenty second today. Yes. Uh, yeah. So twenty third, twenty. So Monday, the twenty fifth is when this gets released. Six a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This will be released, and so we'll have in the show notes the link uh, to the live stream Perfect. tickets on that. And so you guys know the way that I met Gary was Gary actually reached out to me, asking me to speak at TEDx Dairy London there, and I'm so honored uh, to be asked to to speak at this event. Um, you know, I actually have recorded my talk already uh, because I'm going to yes. be a, a, a virtual talk. And so we rebuilt we rebuilt the TEDx Farmingdale stage in my office and put the, the Dairy yes. London Dairy sign on. And love it. Loved it. Loved it. I'm so excited about this one. This is going to be my signature, my signature yeah. uh, TEDx talk. And I'm, I'm so happy that it gets to be at, at your event, man. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And it's going to be an amazing event. Yeah, that's and the honor's all mine, man. Honestly, when I came across your profile, George, and how I came across it was this: I actually came across it on the TED website, and what and I I was I was I was I was um, having a look at at I like to benchmark, George. I like to look at what other people are doing in my genre, and 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 if I see somebody that that catches my attention through through their professionalism or how they conduct themselves, you know, they have my attention, you know? Yeah. So, so I clicked on your profile and I'd seen you done X, Y, and Z and talks and events. And I thought there's a guy that, you know, I didn't even know, didn't know you or I hadn't seen your social media profiles or nothing at that stage. And I just thought that's a guy I wouldn't mind getting to know just to see what makes him tick. He's done X, Y, and Z. Um, I, I am a novice in comparison to what you've achieved and what you're doing. And I thought I can learn from that guy. 
there, there's a lot of synergies there. I figured yeah. we were like-minded in lots, in lots of ways, which we obviously are. Yeah. And um, and and that was that was where the seed was planted for me. You know, yeah. I looked through I looked through hundreds of profiles that day in that site, and uh, I hadn't reached out to nobody. Like you were genuinely like I reached out to yourself. We made contact. The rest is history. Um, I listened to your talks. Um, the current climate has allowed us to add a global feel, let's say, to our events. And I thought I would love George to contribute to our event. Love it. And then we brainstormed. You shared your idea, and uh, if you, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's on unreal. And I can't wait. It'll be. I'd be very, very proud to facilitate the hosting of it. And I can't wait to share it. It's going out on the eighth of February. Um, don't miss it. Yeah. Don't miss it because Absolutely. um you only have one opportunity to watch it live. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited for it. Uh, and we'll we'll share all that information. We've we've talked about everything going on, the Think Network and, and Ted, and you're gonna do the five TEDx talks, which I know you'll get done just like we know I'm gonna get on that main TED stage. That's yes. a big goal, right? Um Yes. Plans, goals. What what's what's what does the next five years look like for you? Next next five years look like um, Think Network becoming the 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 number one independent empowerment platform on planet Earth. Um, we will be the home for hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of um, people to um, to to network to meet like-minded people and to avail from. Um, uh, a lot of personal development um, resources. Um, we will create a lot of opportunity. We will change a lot of lives, <clears throat> and um, I changed my own life in the in the in the process. Um, we already are doing that, George, and we are going to do it in a much bigger scale. Five years time, I'll be fifty years of age coming in June. <laughs> it's hard to believe, man, isn't it? Anybody watching this here, don't bother wiping your screen. What you're seeing's real. <laughs> like you're, you know, what you're seeing's real. What you're seeing's real. I defy logic, defy age, and uh, um, I, actually, I'm going to check my own birth certificate. And uh, so, <laughs> and uh, by fifty, by fifty years of age, George, I'll be in and I'll be out. Yeah, I, 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 I could, I could visualize Think Network um, being a dominant uh, leader in its field, and I can visualize um, uh, like a venture capitalist, or maybe I was going to say competitor, but there ain't no competition. Uh, it's like either uh, I, 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 I don't see competition. I just see other people doing their thing, and the world's a big enough place for everybody. Absolutely. And um, I, and I wish everybody well. So. Yeah. But you might you might see somebody else in that field then then looking to acquire us, let's say, and I I that's what I visualize. I visualize getting in, changing the world, making the world a better place, and then getting out. Um, fifty it. years of age, fifty years of age, um, the world at my feet, and um, on to the next creation. Love it, love it, love it, love hearing it. Okay, let's wrap this thing up strong. The big three. The big three from the launch cast. Gary, we're gonna I'm gonna throw out a couple of things at you, and you're gonna give me your top three quick, concise answers to each one. Ready? Go. Give me your three favorite public speakers out there right now. Oh, three favorite public speakers out there right now. Uh, one is I love listening to Amy Cuddy, um, and she has a, a TED talk that went viral that I mentioned in my own talk. Um, I like listening to a good friend of mine who is a co-speaker at uh, with you um, on our next event, which is Jude Morrow. Um, who is a, an award winning author and speaker and a third speaker who do I like listening to um, right now a third speaker uh, good question good question good question um, um, there's a guy in the UK a podcaster in the UK a guy called Rob Murr are you familiar mm. with him? I'm not no 
No, I enjoy I'll listening to him as well. I enjoy yeah. listening to him as well. He's a leading podcaster and property guy in the UK. So enjoy listening to him as well. Okay, next. Uh, we didn't get into a lot of this. I, you're definitely going to be back one day because I, I didn't even cover – I covered about 60% of what I wanted to cover here. But, it, you know, mm. once you start hitting that hour 20 mark, it's time to start wrapping up. Um, yes. I'm going to ask you, and th- I know this is a very hard question, so I'm not going to use the word favorite. But just give me three family moments that stuck out at you. The the one thing that I did not get to get into here, which I love getting into with other uh, successful dudes, is, is fatherhood and what it's like being mm. a dad and – my favorite job yeah. in the world. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that stuff next time. But give me just three three random moments that pop out at you, three family memories that pop out at you. Um, uh, I'm going to say the birth. Obviously, I can't pick one birth. You can over, count all the births as one, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So the birth of, my child, birth of my children, one day I got married, two. And uh, the third one, my first degree. The th- first of the three, the but the bachelor of science in business. Yeah, that was a breakthrough moment for me. That meant more to me than the other two put together. The ma- even the masters, which is a higher level, yeah. the, the 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 degree was the breakthrough. The masters was expected. Then. Yeah, yeah, love it. Um, three three major lessons that Marshall taught you that stick with you till uh, today. To to believe in myself no matter what. To, to have uh, integrity in what I do. And the third one was to lean on, lean on and believe in, in God, my faith. Be, pract- have faith and know that 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 is the be all and end all know that that is greater than any, any other, any other, any other faculty or any other thing other than, and ultimately that govern governs us all. And I'm not trying to sound like a preacher. I don't even go to a place of worship every weekend, but I'll tell you what, my faith is as strong as any person that does. Um, and, and he, I'm going to say he taught me to have faith. Smart man. Very smart man. Last one. This is going to be a good one. And, and I want to preface this by saying we're not celebrating these things, but it, I think it would be fun to mention them, right? So when you go back, go back to that bad time, those couple of years that you were not acting right, I want three of the most gluttonous things that you did that you could, something similar to that parking ticket story. Oh dear me! Uh, <laughs> without without right. incriminating yourself or getting yourself. Yeah, in trouble. yeah, yeah. Well, well, the first the first thing would be, I'll give you three in addition to the parking story. Yeah. One is I had just completed an I completed on a house, uh, and it was about start of December, and I had uh, after I paid everything, and I had forty grand right that I just had for this was Christmas money. I had forty grand to blow, basically. Let's put it that way. Well, I didn't. I did. I didn't, but I did in my head. Yeah. So I had forty grand to blow. So I took the family off to Euro Disney. Um, I bought a lot of expensive stuff, uh, different bits and bobs. Changed one of the cars. Bought a Volkswagen Beetle, one of the funky ones for my wife. And um, but anyway, the funny story is, I decided I wanted a hot tub. Right, I'd just seen one of these hot tubs somewhere, and I thought that'd be cool. So, so I didn't have a log. I didn't have anywhere to put it. I didn't even have the concrete in the back garden for it to sit on because it's very heavy. So I inquired. I started inquiring about it, and the guy told me you need a concrete back garden or thing for it. I says, right, we'll do that. So I went and got the concrete back garden, um, uh, the patio bit for it. Anyway, I went and got the. I, I rang about a man and he, I says to him, "How much of the hot tubs?" He says, five grand, five five thousand pound." I said, "Can you deliver me one tomorrow?" And he says, "He says it's it's Christmas Eve, where we'll not be open." I said, "Well, I'll give you six grand if you can deliver it tomorrow." <laughs> he says, "I'll be, I'll be there at nine a.m." <laughs> so 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 anyway, right? He delivers the hot tub. We get it in the back garden. We get it filled up, and I go to the shop and buy a couple of bottles of champagne, 
strawberries, <laughs> all the works. <laughs> and so I, there I am sitting in the hot tub at midnight out in the back garden and the neighbors or I could see neighbors picking out their 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 blind their windows, you know, looking you could see all the lights going on, you know, and you could see people picking out and I'm lying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, like uh, that's a that's a that's a that's a big asshole that's thing a to good be one. doing. That's so a good one. I did that. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I went. W- when you're moving in them circles, you're invited to a lot of things like round table dinners where you're the dicky bow, and it's like that's all the aristocracy and the yeah. the, high, the upper class. Sure. And I ain't upper class, but you had the financial capability to move in them circles. So anyway, we 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 go to an event one night. We're sitting around the table. And and uh, I'm drink. I, I'll I'll only drink champagne that night. So, and champagne blows the head, you know, off most people, and it blew the head off me anyway. And uh, I would say, I would say I drank the best part of maybe four bottles of it that that evening, sitting at the table under the fifth bottle, and I can't really remember much after that. <laughs> and like. I'm not even a big drinker, but I was just a big asshole. So <laughs> the, there, there's that. Um, what else? Um, oh, there's all the, I could I could roll a few instances and they won and say I was buying things like, like the ties. Even the ties I were wearing, I was wearing Vivian Westwood ties at eighty and a hundred pound a tie, yeah. and like that's all I would wear. I wouldn't wear out of normal places or whatever. And like, who did I think I was? I was living in a town with a population of ten or fifteen thousand people. I was a year and a half in the business in a property boom where a blind man could have made money. Yeah, and I thought I was, I thought I was, what do you call that, Wolf of Wall Street? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I thought I was tearing the place up financially and. And uh, looking back, it's very embarrassing, you know. Um, yeah. But, hey, I- I completely get him. Gary, it was a pleasure having you on here. Uh, my brother from an Irish mother. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, man. It's a, it's a real great honor to do this here. Honestly, I mean that. Um, we've got we've got loads of synergies, and we're going to continue to work together, you and I, in various capacities. And I can't wait to talk to your American audience and, and, and collaborate and just do more beautiful things together wherever we can offer and serve one another. Let's just keep doing it because yeah, there's, not, absolutely. there's a lot of people doing this, but there's never enough doing it. Yeah, we we have uh, we have some some cool announcements coming from TEDx Farmingdale in a couple of months after we re up our license. Uh, we'll make all of our announcements coming up, and and Gary has something to do with that. Um, Think Network, check it out, guys. Link is in the show notes. TEDx Dairy London Dairy, check out the live stream, and then a few weeks yes. later, I'm sure the the video is going to be available. I'm yes. there. So what what else could you possibly yes. want? Yes, yes. The Support launch dad George. is there. Support, Support George. George. Support us. Let's do it. Gary, pleasure. Hang on for two seconds while I do my outro. I'll be back. No problem. Guys, thank you for joining us on another episode of the LaunchCast. Man, I am back in the swing of things this season. Um, we, we got our, our equipment issues finally fixed, so I think we'll be back in the actual studio next week. Fingers crossed. Uh, everything should be working by then, and we can re- uh, reattach all my equipment to the studio um not that you guys give a shit where i broadcast from but that's where i feel comfortable that's where the launch dad thrives uh check us out every single monday apple podcast pandora spotify iHeartRadio, radio tune in you know the deal guys we'll see you next week into the black hole Thanks for listening to the LaunchCast today. Please make sure to subscribe to this feed wherever podcasts are available. Follow me, George Andriopoulos, at Launchpad CEO on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And make sure to visit our website, guys, thelaunchcast.com. Looking forward to the next episode. See you soon, guys.